Hi everyone, uh, I'm here with my personal good friend here, Matt Desac, a multi-millionaire in internet marketing and also the best-selling author. Hi Matt. How are you doing? Man? Hey, I'm doing good, right. Hey, um, I've been sitting at a bag listening to the, to the tips that you've been sharing on stage and those money-making tips are so powerful that I think that, that I wanted to share with all my subscribers and so on. So here's the thing, I've been listening about uh, this whole list building thing. Now, can you just stress how important is list building in the first place? Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at list building as a general, and I don't know, if you guys are doing list building, I'll tell you what, you're losing out a lot of money, because as your list grows, and what, most people don't realize this, the number one biggest asset, and everybody you know, says different things, but I will tell you, the number one biggest asset that you have is your list. I mean, you and I both know that, and all the top internet marketers know. I mean, how are you going to make someone, how are you going to be able to make well, the question everybody asks about traffic. How do you get, what's the fast way to get traffic to your website? The number one fast way to get traffic to your website, send out an email. You're right. you know, yeah. The number one fastest way to test a product is send out an email. The number right. one fastest way to make anything happen is sending out emails. Emails, email is very, very important for anybody doing anything. You know, let's look at this. If the bigger your list grows, and I've seen this, there's a direct correlation. The big, big you know, the bigger my list grows, the bigger yeah. my bank account grows. But there also comes a point in time when my list will grow, my, my this will be the list, this will be my bank account. My bank account will outgrow my list. Uh -huh. And at that point in time, it's because relationships are being built. It's a right. great way to, to follow up, get relationships. I mean, because, I mean, even if you think about this, if you had a website, so it, it, let's just say you have a website, you send traffic to the website, you don't capture people's information. What ha Can you contact them again? Could you upsell them? Could you do anything? No. Because they didn't order, didn't do anything. But if you had people go to a page and capture their information, you, and then you're able to market to them, you're able to follow up with them, you're able to make a lot more money. And I'm always, I mean, that's the number one biggest thing that I focus on is building that list because without having that, without having those people, I would never be able to do the things I've been able to do. Even if, like, the biggest flaw that I see, and this is, and you guys, if you're not writing this down, write this down. The number one biggest flaw I see with everybody on the internet that they're doing is the fact that they're only focused on joint ventures. You know, I mean, having joint ventures market their products like this. If you don't have a list, then you don't have the insurance you need to make sure that you're going to be making as much money as you want to make. Mm -hmm. Because if, what happens if your JV partners don't do the things they're going to do? What happens, you know, you if you have a list, you can have that insurance to make sure that you're able to get that money that you want to make. Right now, this may sounds like a, like a silly question, but here's the thing. Um, how do we build a list? How do you really build a list? Yeah. I mean, everybody been saying that I want to do list building and so on. Now, what are like the do's and the don'ts for list building? Oh, that's good. The do's and don'ts about get list building. Let's look at those. Uh -huh. First of all, I mean, okay, let's get down to general basics. First of all, if you're listening to this and you don't have a domain, you need to go get a domain or a URL or a www dot. Get one of those now. And what you want to do on that page, specifically put in, uh, people call them opt-in pages, shy yes pages, squeeze page, whatever you want to call it, but you want to build one of those. Now once you have that, now you have the ability to, to really make things happen. You actually need one more thing that I totally forgot about is you need to have an autoresponder. Okay. Um, and I don't care what autoresponder you have, but you need to have an autoresponder. There's um, autoresponse plus, a Weber, you know, one shopping card, I don't care, whatever you've got, just you've got to have some kind of autoresponder that's going to capture people's information, but not only capture people's information, be able to send emails to them on a schedule that you determine. So, so that you're able to follow up with them, send out broadcasts, send out right. auto, you know, messages, because people will talk about they want to have a business where you set and forget. Well, if you have an autoresponder, you can set up a sequence and forget about it, and they're always continually getting emails. Mm -hmm. If you really want to do that, but you'll make more money by just broadcasting. Right, got it. But, so you got to have, those are the basis of what you've got to have. Now, once you have that. Hold on, right, Ben, uh, just to make sure everybody is on the same frequency as us. So the do for this building is that every single web page of you, of yours, you're going to have a mechanism for them to subscribe to your autoresponder, is Correct. that right? So exactly. that's the first point. Yeah, and that's a really good point because if you have what I call a branding site or something like that, I mean, you want to have a mechanism for them to subscribe. Yeah, because I've seen there's so many blogs out there, whether it's bloggers' blogs or WordPress blogs, but you know that it's nothing, it's just content there and there's no way how they can subscribe right. to many days. And it doesn't go into what, what you just shared, the autoresponder, the sequence and things like that. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, but once you have, and I will tell you that, you know, having a blog and throwing an opt-in on there is very important. So if you have a blog, you got to throw some kind of mechanism to 
capture people's information and follow up them. If you have a, a branding site or you know like a content site, you want to have a mechanism to capture people's information. Maybe even have put a pop up on there to capture people's information. But when I do everything, everything that I do, I drive all that traffic to one page, one page only. Every single traffic source that I have, articles, I mean everything, mm -hmm. is all getting driven straight to an opt-in page. So that, I mean, that's only there's only one thing they can do when they go to that page. That's opt in, watching two, opt in or leave. You know, but no, other than that, they can't do anything else. And this copy page that you're, you're talking about, is it like a long copy, short copy, a lot of graphics? I mean, how does it look like? Is there like a specific things that they should have an opt in page? Yeah, the interesting thing is, is you know, on your opt in page, let me tell you some things from my mm -hmm. testing. Now, I understand I'm in a, I'm in you know a different niche maybe than you. Mm -hmm. um, I used to find here's what I knew uh, here's what it used to happen. A shorter squeeze page, basically if you look at a, a, your computer screen, like right now you're looking at your computer screen, and if you can't scroll down, that means you're looking at, right. uh, you're, everything's above the fold. Right. But if, as soon as you start scrolling down, that's called below the fold. Now, uh -huh. the reason I wanted to share that with you, because something important happens at that moment. One thing I want to share with you too, when it comes to pages, um, and, get, and, I'll, and I'll answer this in a sec, but when you're looking at web pages, most people don't realize how eye movement works. I move it. I move it. Right. People's eyes move when they land on the page. So when somebody's going on uh -huh. a page and they land above, they're above the fold. People will read or uh -huh. look left to right. So okay. their eyes will move this way. All right, but guys, pay attention to this because we we're moving to slightly more advanced uh, tips here. Yeah. Right. So, but when but when we go below the fold, so people scroll down below the fold, and people put their mouse on the, that right hand side mm -hmm. and scroll down, they start reading from right to left. Okay. Now, why did I just tell you that? And what the heck does that have to do with anything right. we're talking about? Right. Here's what it is. What most people don't realize is it identifies the prime real estate uh -huh. on your page. Right. For example, if you have a blog and you know you put an opt-in box, you want your opt-in box or on, on, above the fold, you want your opt-in box on the upper left-hand side because it'll increase your conversions. Okay. If if you're going below the fold, as long as formatting allows, if you go below the fold, uh -huh. you want to put your opt-in box below the fold oh, yeah. on the right-hand side right. because that's where the prime real estate. Those are prime real estate right. areas. Now you can use that. Now here's another side thing, mm -hmm. but it'll help anybody. If you really think about that, you're running AdSense pages, you're running um, you know, affiliate links on your pages. That's where you want the, 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 the concentration of those links or of whatever action you want those individuals to take. Above, so, so it's something to think about. Now, things do change when you put pictures on there. So yeah. just, you know, people will go to the picture before they go to that. Right. But the other thing, so that's something to think about. Now, why did I tell you that? Mm -hmm. The reason I told you that is because whenever I'm doing a, whenever I'm creating a, a squeeze page, I, I, I take that consideration. What is the action or what is the thing I want them to read? Now, the interesting thing is, is when I'm using a short squeeze page, that means a short squeeze page, there's two types of squeeze pages. Write this down, two types. First type is a short squeeze page. And that basically is everything's above the fold. They can't scroll down to get any more information. So, very minimal text. Yes, very minimal text, straight to the point, a couple bullets. Um, they go over, there's an opt-in mm -hmm. over there. Now, a short squeeze page, one thing that I've, I have found, a uh, short squeeze page works very well when the traffic has no idea who you are. All right. So if the traffic's never met you before, they don't know who you are, it wasn't sent by JV traffic or anything else, a short squeeze page, I have found, out pulls mm -hmm. a longer squeeze page in situations like that. So Because because people, right now we live in, a, in an environment, in a... Uh -huh. In, in a society of, of instant gratification. Right. People want stuff now, just get it over with. And they don't know you, They, I mean, they're gonna be more likely to, they don't wanna give you all their time and energy. So so that's why if the traffic doesn't know you, a lot of times a short squeeze page will outpull a long squeeze page. Now a longer squeeze page, if the traffic knows you, is referred to you or whatever, basically a longer squeeze page will outpull a um, shorter one. And so a lot of people don't realize that there's also other things. We've, I've been doing a lot of testing on colors, mm -hmm. uh, for example. Well, bound backgrounds. It used to be white, navy blue. You'll right. see that a lot. Yeah. Um, it used to be uh, light gray worked really yeah. well and black. Right. Um, my testing just shows in the recent in the recent testing I've been doing um, just in the last couple of weeks. But the, the the black background basically meaning the background's black. All the text and everything is in a white box mm -hmm. or a white area. Right. Um, is is actually pulling for me the best. It's uh -huh. the number one best kind of best color that I'm using right now. And so my opt-in pages have black backgrounds. Um, it'll have information on there. I throw, now on a short squeeze page, where the, the prime real estate is, is on the, 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 the left-hand side, like I was saying, when I was talking about the eye movement. Now, here's the deal. I don't put my opt-in box there because I don't have enough time to build rapport. I throw a testimonial in that area, uh -huh. or possibly a video, right. 